Hi, I'm Mike Fabio. I'm the community director at Warner Brothers Records, where I help to promote a variety of artists from Michael Bublé and Josh Groban to Mastodon and My Chemical Romance, uh, using a variety of online and social media. Just a quick thank you. I want to thank my fellow panelists and everyone else who has made this unpanel happen. I think it's easy to make a lot of hubbub about piracy. I don't think anyone's really going to argue that record sales are down, and I think the music industry knows this. But the truth is that, in many ways, there really has never been a better time to be an artist. And more importantly, there's never been a better time to be a music fan. The music industry is obviously in a state of flux. CD sales are down, digital sales are up. Ticket sales are decreasing, while the price of tickets is rapidly increasing. And I think that the rapid influx of cheap technology has driven the cost of every facet of the music industry, whether it's songwriting or recording or distribution or promotion, to near zero. It's easy to see how a label might be a little scared by this, and although nobody is really sure how it will eventually play out, I think one thing is for certain. Uh, all of these indicators really point to a more consumer-friendly and fan-centric version of the music business. Never in the history of music have we really been in a position to connect artists directly to fans, at least not on the sort of scale that we are seeing. Music marketers typically look to big networks like Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, or Twitter to be the centerpieces of these rapidly expanding online fan bases, while smaller services and ancillary software help to create uh, novel ways for fans to interact with the artists that they love. The simplest forms of fan engagement, whether it's a direct message on Twitter or a candid YouTube video, can often have an impact that rivals that of even the most heavily produced music video. And moreover, with the rapid growth of free and legal and label-supported music outlets, uh, the artists are finally able to engage fans with the single most valuable piece of their marketing arsenal, which is the music itself. From the fan perspective, the price of music may be changing, but the value of music has not. It continues to enrich our lives in just the same way that it ever has. Today, fans are able to engage and interact with the music that they love. And indeed, in many cases, they have come to expect it. Live video chats with an artist might help the fan to become a part of the recording process. And viral and grassroots promotions on social nets might help an army of fans feel as though they've really helped to drive that artist's multi-platinum sales. And, of course, remix competitions and the like can often incentivize music fans to interact with the recordings, disseminate their own versions, and perhaps even promote the fans' own musical aspirations at the same time. We live in an era of fan-centric music, where the interaction between the fan and the artist shapes every facet of the experience. The music business isn't dying, it's just changing, and perhaps for the, be for the better. What do you think? Leave a video response or drop a message in the chat room. I can't wait to hear what your thoughts are on the future of this music business.